When you have a strong mission and everyone's eyes are focused on the mission, people just naturally, they're available. They, they want to collaborate, want to help every, each of us be successful because we're, when we succeed as a, as a team, we're succeed and we're helping grow the kingdom. And that, so the mission matters. When you combine finance, the banking world, and faith, how does one lead with a mission-driven approach? Welcome to Seat Go Create, where today we're joined by Aaron Cade, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer at Christian Community Credit Union. Aaron stepped into this role with a desire to align his extensive marketing expertise with his faith, guiding a finance institution dedicated to not just profit, but purpose. With over two decades of experience in digital transformation and brand loyalty across notable organizations like Citibank, J.P. Morgan Chase, and the YMCA of Metro Chicago, Aaron's journey is a blend of strategic innovation and principled leadership. Aaron, welcome to Seat Go Create. Thank you, Tim. It's a pleasure to be with you and your listeners. Yeah, I'm glad that you're here. We're going to have a fun conversation. First thing let's do, let's just do a little icebreaker Somebody bumps into you and say, I just ask what you do. What's your answer typically mm. to people? So I, I would say I, what I'm passionate about is I help Christ followers align their financial lives with their faith to bring, to, to bring true stewardship to their lives. The gifts that God has entrusted with them are obviously they're not ours. We're just we're, God has entrusted it to us. It all belongs to Him. So, how do we put it, put our financial gifts to their best use to further the kingdom? So, I'm just thrilled to be in a role where I can do what I love to do professionally, which is marketing in financial services, and align it with my own faith and help other Christ followers align their finances with their own Christian faith. So what's your, what's your personal faith story, faith journey? Are you, you know, Christian from birth or has that been a journey process like most of us? What's just, and you, you give me the high points of, you know, when you decided that you were going to be a follower of Christ. Yeah, I, I was raised in a Methodist family. So I, I have very early memories of, of being in church and going to Sunday school. And, but I really, I, I made my own personal commitment to Christ when I was a junior in high school. And a very good friend of mine, we just had a conversation one night and, and he just shared with me his own story and asked me if, that, you know, if this was a journey I wanted to embark upon. And we prayed together. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior that night. And, you know, it's, it's, I can't say it's always been a smooth journey since. I don't think it is for anybody. But I can say that over the last, since I met my wife almost eight years ago at this point, she she's a true spiritual partner for me and it's i've really it's really accelerated my spiritual growth and the the deepening my a deepening relationship with with the lord and i just you know and it and it makes for a very fruitful and abundant marriage as well just to have to be not just a a, a strong married couple but spiritual partners as well i think it's an amazing and and that story is very common amazing where we have we'll we'll, we'll call it hard charging, maybe success oriented dudes, guys like, you know, probably we are that many times seems like just my perspective. There's a strong <laughs> faith, <laughs> faith driven woman that keeps just a lot of that stuff on track. That's the way it is for me. I don't know if that is for you. Sounds like yeah, it. It is. It's, <laughs> and it's just, and it's, you know, we've become We've grown deeper in our in our local church community. We've become leaders in our church, and it's just been an, it's been a good organic, fruitful journey together. So I just feel like my my faith grows day by day, and and then being in a in a in a, in a company where I can live out my faith every day at work, where it's encouraged, where where it's welcome, where it, where we actually work together to not only to help achieve business objectives, not only to serve our members, but to help each other grow in faith. So it's just a, it's, it's just been a complete blessing for me. This, this, even the, the last few years of my, my spiritual journey. Yeah, that is good. When you got, you know, 
Christian in the name of your organization, it kind of, and we'll talk about this in a little while, probably creates a bit of a, a standard and a purpose and maybe, maybe also a target and all. We'll talk about that in just a second. But I, for those that are listening, for those that are watching this on YouTube, you will see that Aaron has, is that, is that burnt orange? What color is that? That, that, that <laughs> shirt is there. It is burnt orange. <laughs> orange. Yeah. Orange. And there's a, there's a picture of a, I a guess long a longhorn, horn, you know, some kind of outdoor animal on there. And so my big question is, is, is it possible to, to be a Christian and go to the university of Texas? I'm, <laughs> I'm just wondering about that because Absolutely. that's gotta be part of the journey, right? Absolutely. It's, there was a, there was a, I have to say a strong faith community at the university when I was there, very active, very active Christian student groups, but is absolutely. And sometimes the, the Longhorns do test my faith, <laughs> but this, this last year was a particularly good year in terms of football, at least. But I, yeah. I look back on my time at the university of Texas and appreciate every moment of it. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things go as y'all move over into, a, you know, that whatever Southeastern conference and all that. So one other question, just a rumor I heard about Texas that many people there believe that Matthew McConaughey may be the second coming of Christ. Is that a true or false statement? I don't know what other people believe, but I certainly don't believe that. <laughs> he's a good actor. He's a funny guy. He's a good, uh, he's a good team supporter, but uh, no. <laughs> I, I think what's the title now? Minis Minister of Culture or something like that at the school? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, enough, enough, enough with the fun stuff here. Let's, let's, let's talk serious. I, I did, when you first jumped on, I said, Hey, where's your banker outfit, man? You're wearing like, you know, this longhorn pullover here and don't, don't you bankers, don't y'all all wear suits? Not us. Uh, and I haven't worn a, you know, a suit on a regular basis for a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. Wow. Yeah. So, so well, we're not state, we're not stayed bankers. We're, we're very, we're vibrant Christ followers. Very good. All right. Well, let me do a couple things here. I, I want to dig a little bit in how you ended up in. It looks as if your journey has been in a in and around a lot of the banking world. And you know, there's some. Yeah, you're with Christian Community Credit Union now, but some of these some of these banks are the big are the big ones that are out there. Citibank, J.P. Morgan Chase. Did you, did you come out of school and go into the banking world? It was, is finance always been your thing or did you just realize that somewhere along the way? It came a little later in my career development. When I first came out of the University of Texas, I was, a I, I worked for Accenture. Interestingly, I was doing, I, I was doing IT consulting and that gave me great, I, I learned skills there, especially in project management that have served me well for the rest of my career, no matter what area I've been focused on. It was after graduate school that I, that I, I made the move into financial services, joining Citibank right out of my graduate program and got exposed to a lots of different areas of the consumer banking business, operations, finance, and then marketing. And marketing is where I really found my passion. And that's where I've developed my career since. So did you, did you ease into marketing or was that something you were like, you know, you're focused on getting into? Did it, you know, was it the grace of God? Was it luck? Was it focus? What strategy? What, what was the path? Because it, you know, from the IT, tr truthfully, let me just say that's, that's a tough leap if one really is looking at it from what the world would say would be like that traditional path. So how, do, how did that come to be? I'm always, I'm fascinated with journey. We love the journey here on Seat Go Create. So how, what was that journey like? I mean, it, I joined at Citibank, I joined an intentional management development program. So it was intentionally designed to, to provide three very different experiences in the consumer bank over three years. And I, so I started in a role that was in finance and then in operations. I, I, I worked in a call center for, for a, a period of time and then took on a rotation in marketing and just Marketing was something I had never really done before. So a lot of it was learning, understanding how to connect with consumers, how to find, how to connect with them on, on, on solving problems or, or meeting needs. And I just loved it. I just, I just found that the whole process of, of, of connecting with consumers was just so fun. And you get instant feedback. 
so you can you can learn and adapt and improve and do new things with with real life feedback from real life people and uh, so i just loved it so that's that's the direction i chose to go from that moment on both at citibank and then later with jp morgan chase and at sears as well i worked in the i was the chief marketing officer in the financial services business at sears so you moved after the consulting roles you it seems like you didn't move into that that retail banking industry and and Sears was that in their credit area? It was it was in the financial services business, which financial was services. you know the Sears card is the biggest part of that, but there were many different products that were meant to help facilitate sales, help help consumers to be able to 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 make whether it's a big appliance purchase to be able to finance that over time or to be able to get you know uh, apparel and back to school items for their kids. It ran the gamut. And it covered Sears and Kmart, and Land's End at that time was part of uh, part of the Sears universe too. Are they still around, Sears? I know Kmart; they're not quite. Are they they're, gone? They're all gone? They're almost all gone. Almost. They're still there. There's still a few stores. There's still an online presence, but no, it's 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 not the it's not the place it was when I was there. Unfortunately, I, I'm I'm of the age that still remembers all the Sears stores, Kmart's too, uh, all of those. And it's, I think it's the nature of business that things ebb and flow, but y- you know, we, we have Amazon delivering at our doorstep, even though we're in an RV almost every day, but it, and that's a reflection on that industry going by the wayside. A- Aaron, when, when I asked you at the beginning, kind of what you do, you brought up that communicating stewardship to 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 the people you interact with and how they could be stewards with their finances and all was important to what you do now. If you back up to, you know, JP Morgan, Citibank, and then into that Sears arena, was that stewardship focus present then? Or did that grow over time? Did it did it come to a head when you came with the credit union? What talk about that process because I that process has been interesting for me. What's that been like for you going through those type organizations? Yeah, I and it was present back then. It was it would be a more the more secular version of stewardship, which is financial health or financial fitness or investing for the future. You know, saving for the future. Those things aren't specifically stewardship. They are part of. They can be part of stewardship, but it's the secular version of that. And so taking that and taking it to its to, to where God intends us to, to be has been very much interwoven with the, the role that I currently have at Christian Community Credit Union and really being able to take practices that were effective in helping consumers and businesses achieve better financial health, but then turn that toward eternal gain, not just, not just financial gain in this world. Hmm. I, I, I'm one that I could do some, I don't say bashing, complaining about some of the big banks out there, but I don't want us to do that here. I'd rather not. We'll talk a little bit about the differences between credit unions and banks in just a moment. But I, I think the thing I'd love to know is, did you have any, when there are often people that are in what we'll call the marketplace, that, that their, their faith is growing they're moving through the corporate, either the ladder or they're just moving and, you know, trying to attempt to do the things they need to do there, that, that conflicts will arise between their faith and either what they're asked to do or who they're interacting with or anything like that. Without bashing, yes. were, were you ever faced with some conflicts? Were there things where your faith was stretched or strained, where you felt I'll use the word compromise, if that makes sense, where you said, ooh, this is something I would rather not, anything like that come to mind when I bring that up, because those are some really profit-driven big organizations that you were a part of, and I right. could see the possibility for conflict. And and, I, and without being specific or using names, which I think you're asking me to do, I, I have been in situations where I've been asked to undertake a, a, a the development of a product or a project that didn't have, in my mind, the right focus. It was focused on maximizing profits for the company 
as opposed to maximizing value for the consumer. And I think you, you know, I, I, I think it can be very easy to, for those paths to diverge, but ultimately the best profits and the ones that are sustainable are the ones that are derived from de generating value for the consumer, for the end consumer. When they are getting value for their money, they will remain, they will be loyal to your product and to your company, and they will buy more from you. They will take on more products. So oftentimes it's, you know, it's, I, and I did find myself, you know, being asked to do things that I thought, this seems like we're trying to trick people. I see how this generates profit in the short term, but it's done through tricking people. We're not being entirely forthright. And I don't agree with that. So I, I and, and, and I, you know, I did, I did, I did argue for my position when, when these things came up and in many cases I was successful in, in other cases, I wasn't as successful. I, I, you know, I, there's, there's at least one job that I left because there were too many instances of, of the, the company making a decision that what might be good for the short term, for short term profitability, but not good for not good for consumer value and not good for long term health and profitability of the company. Yeah, you know, I, I I feel confident, Aaron, that anyone who's been in the marketplace has probably faced something like that. I I, I think when we're faced with those things, I think there's a couple things happen. Number one, we grow because we learn. And, and I think that at times when we're in a compromised position for too long, I think it can impact our soul. And, you know, you just mentioned that you left a, a job or anything like that. But one of the things we love to do here is if there's a, a quote unquote ministry opportunity, is there, is there anything that you might say to someone who's in a in a tough spot right now that they're that maybe in they're in a bigger organization or something and they're just mm, trying to trying to live by that faith too. I don't I mean if nothing comes to mind that's fine, but just any anything that you learned while navigating that process yourself. I mean, I think you can advocate for what's right and you can and you can do the right thing and set a good example and others and, and encourage others to follow. And I, I think that's we can all do that no matter where we work. And, you know, I've been, I've been very fortunate that it's, it's, it hasn't been, this has not been something I've had to address much in my career. There was that one instance a long time ago that, uh, but, uh, you know, ultimately a lot of, you know, I do find that there is a lot of good in this world and there are a lot of people who want to do the right thing. Sometimes people can get distracted by, short term by mm -hmm. short term profits but if you can just if you can advocate for the right thing model the right behavior and encourage others to follow a lot of times you can you can get you can get others to follow you and 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 do what's right yeah what's interesting is we've had this conversation a lot here at seat go create there are many people that would say that a ministry role is where everybody needs to be that's a follower of Christ. And you see what you just said to me highlights the need for people of faith to be in the marketplace because you, and you may have known about it and you may not even know where had to be an example to some other people. And it sounds like it was positive. You know, we mess up, but anyway, sounds like it, it was there was something you mentioned just a few minutes ago that before I go into the differences between the organizations you were with and now the, the organization you're currently with, I, I'd like, you brought up the word, I think, tricking people, which is, which is interesting, I think, in the capitalist free enterprise, which I love, by the way, I'm, I'm a business consultant, I'm an entrepreneur and Started my first business way back in the mid '80s in college, and have had companies and all that. However, I do notice, and I'm a marketing guy too. I love doing marketing things, and I do notice it's very easy to go from uh, promoting, maybe persuasion, to somewhere along the line we can often cross over into manipulation, 
deception and it's and it sounds like you have seen maybe some of that and that might have been part of what you were just talking about but you to talk a little bit about that and and I've got a follow-up question that might help us lead into the talking about where you are now but to to me with all that is going on and and I you know my feed shows it in social media my I see it if I turn on you know YouTube or something like that for for those you know there was a a couple of football games yesterday. There's commercials and things going on. How do we stay on that promotion side? Maybe a little bit of persuasion and not step over into the manipulation and deception. I think, and it's and it and it can come from actually a good place too. It can come from passion and exuberance, and you, you really believe in what you're what you're selling and the the product, and you get into. It, sometimes it can overflow into exaggeration and or glossing over the, over the, the negative. And so, you know, it, it isn't always coming from a bad place, but it can just be an, it can be a, an extension of, of something that started and is ultimately a, a good thing. And I think where you, where you can help yourself there is to surround yourself with other perspectives and voices. So people who are not afraid to say no, or to say, Hey, I, I see what you're saying, but so I think it's, I think it's, I love being in a culture that promotes that diversity of thought and diversity of perspective because everyone just keeps each other on the, on the, on the, on the right path because people aren't afraid to say, but did you think about that? Or how about this? Or maybe we could, maybe we could say it better this way. So I think that's important. You have to, it has to be an intentional approach because it's, you know, it, it can be very easy to get into a command and control kind of environment where, where, People do what they're told, and that's not good. It's it ultimately is not good for them, not good for the leader, and it's not good for the culture or for the consumer. So I, I I love environments that promote that, and I've worked I've worked in many places that do, and it's just fun. It's fun and creative, and you just you, you keep things on the on the right path that way. Mm. I l- I love what you said about diverse thought and and things like that and listen d- diversity i want to say this loud and clear diversity is not a bad word a lot of people in today's world it, it becomes political diversity is a great word but it goes all the way around my wife worked for a silicon valley company and and they were heavy into diversity and and, and all of that but not really the type of diversity that she brought to the table, which was a conservative Southern Christian woman. <laughs> you know, it was more other. I, I love having a wide variety around the table. But the the thought that came to me, and and this is where I want us to start migrating towards talking about the Christian Community Credit Union. When you were in the roles, you, you talked about they were they were consumer driven with your previous what we'll call them the retail banking industry who did those organizations serve and when i say serve i don't necessarily mean customer who were they in servant to and and i and i think this is going to lead us into the question about christian community credit union i think you're smiling i think you know where i'm going here so talk to me about who those organizations serve and then i'll see if there's a follow up before we bridge into the next area yeah. for the most part you're serving you're serving investors right you're helping deliver a a return to shareholders a return on their investments and and there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that it's 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 how we it's how we have built this incredible economy it's how we've built this com- country so that's that's good but it has to you know you have to be doing that in the delivering those returns to shareholders because you're meeting needs for end consumers. You're solving problems for them. You're helping make their lives better. But yeah, ultimately you're serving, you're serving shareholders. And the challenge going back to the potential conflicts is at times there can be a built in, built in conflict between what we were talking about, you know, maybe manipulation, trickeration, whatever word you want to use. And, and that, is that, is that, is that a true statement? I mean, there, there can, you know, that, that's why, and that's 
then when you talk about ministry not being the only way you can serve fa faithfully, I think that's why we need, you know, we need Christian, we need Christ followers throughout our economy who right. are, yes, they're, they're working hard to deliver value for shareholders, but they're doing it by serving customers, by doing right. the right thing, earning profits in the right way, in a sustainable way. And so I, I you know, I want to see, I wouldn't want to see every Christ follower in a, in a ministry role. It would just, we, the impact would be, would be diluted. We want to see Christians, believers in every aspect of, of our economy and our society having an impact because anything, you, 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 many aspects of life can be ministry. They don't have to be serve, teaching in a, in, a, on Sunday in church. You can minister in many ways. Yeah, and I and I want to say this sort of as a follow up is that there are probably some ministries and churches. I'm on the board of a few ministries and you know churches that they may not be serving the proper thing. Also, <laughs> they might be in it for something different than is pure. So I don't. It, this is not just a because you know, humans filthy. are fallible, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fallible. like it's more of a human thing, not just. Right. Not just, but I, d but I do think sometimes we can structure things to where they have the higher likelihood of moving into that stewardship role that you brought up earlier. So having said all that, somewhere along the way, you left the, the bigger banks, I bank at Wells Fargo. And let me, let me just say, I, mm, I, I loathe them at times right now. I'm in a situation where they it's it's related i'll share this it's related to the patriot act they need a physical address well i don't have one i am a nomad homeless and they are needing that to conform you probably know it in your industry and and they finally got one but there's a relative of ours that's in similar situation they shut down an account because they didn't have it so anyway all right rant over somewhere along the way you moved into a credit union situation and to put a capper on that Christian community credit union. So talk about that transition. And then in a little while, I want to, I want to, I want it for someone who may not know, we're going to talk about the difference between credit union and that retail bank and all that. But t talk about your transition and what that looked like. I really consider it providential that I became aware of the, of the role that I have today. I frankly didn't know that there was even such a thing as a Christian credit union. I did not know that you could, you could, uh, that there were faith-based organizations that collect deposits, lend money. I didn't know until I, until I learned about it from a recruiter. And I, at that moment, I, I, I really felt God gra grabbing me by the lapels and saying, this is what you need to do. This is, this is for you. And I'm so, I'm so thankful for that. And and, and credit unions, I, they explicitly align your incentives with what's right for members. So just mm -hmm. any credit union, your credit unions are owned by the members. So I, I'm a, I'm a member of Christian community credit union. I'm, I'm a part owner of the credit union. Um, you, credit unions exist to serve their members. Their board of directors is elected from among their members and the profits you earn go back to members in the form of better rates and lower fees. And in the case of Christian Community Credit Union, we also give back to ministries who are serving to spread the gospel, to protect vulnerable children, to combat human trafficking. So we, we, do, we, take a, we, we intentionally take a portion of our profits and donate them to, to expanding the kingdom. And so how long have you been with them? What was the time frame? I saw it somewhere. I don't have it in front of me here. It's been a little over three years. And those three years have flown by. That's, I still feel like the new guy at the, at the credit union, but I've, it's been three years and it's just, it's been, it's just been an incredible experience. So you made that transition in the midst of a, what I guess worldwide pandemic, correct? How, how, how was that change during that? We're, I'm hopeful that we're getting away from having the discussion, but I'm always intrigued by changes that people went through during that time frame. I didn't even meet my team face to face until I had been on the job for six months. So it wasn't possible to travel and to go into the office for the first six months I was on the job. And 
and we really didn't skip a beat. I, I wondered how this would be get onboarding, taking on a new job, getting to know, you know my peers, my boss, getting to know my team purely on zoom. And it worked. It worked. And I think a lot of that has to do with the culture of the, of the credit union. People mm -hmm. are just collaborative. When you have a strong mission and everyone's eyes are focused on the mission, people just naturally, they're available. They, they want to collaborate, want to help every, each of us be successful because we're, when we succeed as a, as a team, we're, succeed, we're helping members become better stewards, helping members succeed financially, and we're helping grow the kingdom. And so the mission matters. Having a good, strong, and in our case, Christ-centered mission is, is so critical for, for our, our culture, so critical for how we work together, so critical for the successes we're able to achieve. And in my case, so critical for being able to join a new company and get to know everyone virtually. What's interesting, you brought this up and I'm, I'm thinking the same thing on my end. I'd like to think I'm pretty familiar with businesses, business models in my, you know, 60 years here because I've studied it and all that. I was not aware of an organization, a credit union that was a, a banking organization that was, was faith, faith based. I, I was aware of the insurance, the health insurance. That's kind of like the, the, you know, the medical share and things like that. I was somewhat aware of those things, did not know it existed in the banking world. But before we go too much farther into that, what I'd let you, you did it a little bit. And I know this is probably a question you answer a good bit. So this is almost like if, if you've got pitch mode, this might be the pitch mode to go into. I'm giving you permission. Why a credit union over? A, a traditional retail bank. You mentioned members and things like that. So if there's some repetitiveness, that's okay. But give me the reason or the contrast. What's the difference between the two that I'm a Wells Fargo guy. Go ahead and sell me. Tell me why I should leave and take all my accounts, business and all, and come over to Christian Community Credit Union. I'm okay with you selling me. <laughs> okay, great. Well, you can, you can bank just about anywhere. You can bank with an organization that uses your money to fund questionable practices, may invest your money in questionable or, or things that you don't agree with morally or spiritually, or you can take your money and, 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 and put it on deposit with Christian Community Credit Union, where you know that that money, the money you put on deposit helps us provide affordable financing to build new churches, to help ministries grow, to help impact the king. And it's ultimately going to further the gospel, not in support of an organization that might be trying to suppress the gospel like, like many of the big banks seem to be doing these days. And in the process, because we exist to serve members, not to earn profits for shareholders, you're getting better rates most of the, you know, often you're getting better rates than you could at a, at a, at a, at a secular bank, lower fees, and you, you've got products that are designed with your needs in mind, transparent, providing you value, serving, serving your needs, helping you steward God's resources in the best way you can. I want to drill down on that word transparent because as a member driven organization, my guess is that transparency is the members have access to, I don't want to say all the financials, but it's, it's, it's available. I, we used to be the members of a co-op that was a power company and, you know, they would actually pay money now that we're years ago, we lived there. I still get a check every few years because there was there was funds that were made while we were members, quote unquote, paying, and we're still getting some of that back. But anyway, that I, I do think there's a higher level of transparency in a member-driven credit union than, let's say, one of the big retail banks. I don't know that much about Wells Fargo. I could probably study their shareholder reports, but hey, I, don't, I don't dig in much there. So transparency, good thing? 
Uh, very good thing. And we, we publish our financials, our audited financials every year. We have an annual meeting of members um, mm -hmm. where they can bring questions. They can ask us questions about the financials. And we actually publish our financials more frequently than once a year, but we make a big push to members in that annual meeting. And, and the transparency also comes in the way products are designed. You know, some financial institutions, the way they the way they make money is they create complicated products that have catches and hooks and, you know, and, you know, hidden fees and things like that. You know, with us and with many credit unions, you just want to, you want to provide, you want to create a product that is serving a need, a, a defined financial need that members have in the simplest way possible. So it's not, you know, you're not looking to create all these fees that, that, that maybe in the short term help the bottom line, but mm -hmm. in the long term aren't serving, aren't serving the end consumer well. So I think the, the transparency comes in many ways and all the way down to, to how products are designed and marketed. Now, a lot of people traditionally, the, their bank, they wanted it on the you know, corner of you know, Main Street and Third Avenue. So I guess they could go down and check their money or something. I'm not sure. I can't. I can't tell you the last time I've actually been in a physical bank, but, but a lot of people feel the need for that. Has the banking industry moved to primarily virtual or are, are y'all still specifically, even with Christian community, is it, is it location driven? I know, I know there's some regulations with where you can do business, right? So we serve Christians in all 50 states. We serve Christian ministries in all 50 states. We, because we're a credit union, we're part of the co-op network of shared branches. So the, brand, the shared branch network is over 5,600 branches across the country. That's more than Chase or Wells Fargo. Have. So, but most of, our, most of our members, the vast majority of our members do business with us digitally from the convenience of their phone. And, mm -hmm. and just like you, I can't remember the last time I was in a branch or needed to do something there. But if if a, if a member does need to do branch banking of some sort, they can go to their, the, their neighborhood credit union and, 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 conduct, and conduct business. And there's over right. 30,000 surcharge-free ATMs as well. You can take right. out money without paying fees. And one of the things that I, way back when, I had heard you need to be part of a credit union. It's just a better banking experience. That was in general. However, because I was not necessarily you know, in a community, we've been, my wife and I've been traveling for 10 years. I, I wasn't necessarily a former military person or I, I didn't believe I was part of a community that was a credit union because it is, you know, the people that are in the community share something. They share either it's in a, I hate to say an alumni, but, and, and the one that keeps popping to mind is the Navy Federal. I guess those are people that served in military or family or anything like that is the is the requirement strict for membership this is not where i want to ask for a profession of faith we'll talk about that in just a moment okay but is the membership requirement strict that people need to be part of that group yeah we you can be you can become a member in one of three ways or you can qualify for membership in one of three ways one is through your church school or, or, or ministry. It, it, you might work for one of them. You might be a, um, a member of a, mm -hmm. of, a, of a ministry, or you might be a regular attendee. That's one way you can qualify. It's just by virtue of, of the, the, the church, school, or ministry that you're affiliated mm -hmm. with. Another way is you could be related to a, 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 an existing member of the credit union. So, and the third way is you can join our partner charity. So we, we, are, we are partnered with Christian Alliance for Orphans, and they just do incredible work to, to, to lift up the widows and the, and the fatherless, both here domestically and, and, and across the globe. And you can join Christian Alliance for Orphans at the same time you join the credit union and be, and be eligible for membership that way. So, okay. So in credit unions in general, there is that membership component and you just went through, I think for, for y'all's give me, I, I think I saw it somewhere on a site and, and I'm sure you could probably do this fairly easily. It wasn't always Christian community and this organization has been around. This isn't something that just popped up here a few years ago. I think I saw it was 50, 60 years or something. Maybe I might be wrong on 66 that. 66 years ago. 
Yeah, give me give me quick quick history, and then I've got a couple other things here that I want us to hit before we start wrapping up. So, uh, sixty six years ago, a handful of American Baptist ministers got together and were comparing notes about how hard it was to get financing to build a church or to expand their ministry because banks just didn't understand them. It's they said they don't understand an organization that lives off of the generosity of its members and they don't know how to read a giving statement. They so they <laughs> found it very difficult to do that, but they said what if we pool our resources together? We could then help others in our same position. So help other American Baptist ministers. And that's how it got started. It got started in the back of a church one day and started with, I think, four or five ministers. It was originally the American Baptist Ministers Credit Union. And then over time, it grew to serve the entire American Baptist community, became the American Baptist Credit Union. And then about 25 years ago, expanded to include, to become the Christian, Christian Community Credit Union. So, and we're now the largest faith-based credit union in the country in terms of assets. Yeah. So this is a slightly, I, I sometimes just give a warning. This is a slightly cynical question. So I'll just go ahead and prepare you. When we attach the name Christian to things now, many times in our culture, it unfortunately has almost become a little more divisive than it has welcoming. And and to, to even do another layer of cynicism, people will start trying to say this denomination, that denomination. I, you can tell by the question, I'm not for all that. But how do you, how do you address that? How do you either prevent that? How do you, how do you open up, but yet have members? You mentioned the requirements earlier. How do you determine if someone's a Christian? <laughs> Well, that's a we, bigger question there. If you do, if you don't want to address that, that's fine. Part of part of the membership process is reviewing and agreeing with our statement of faith, which okay. which would be familiar to 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 many to many Christians and 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 our beliefs of the Trinity and the and it, that is part of the process. So somebody could lie, but we're trusting that that they wouldn't do that. That. You want to associate yourself with other Christians. You mm -hmm. want to build God's kingdom, and and if you're, you know, if, if you're demonstrating your eligibility for membership, agreeing to the statement of faith, you know, we uh, we welcome you into the family. Right. And other than just being like on really cool podcast and talking about what you're doing, what what are some of the roles? that you're filling with you and your team. This is, I'll probably ask for some business tips on this, but what, tell me what your specific role is currently with the organization. We, so in addition to leading marketing across really any channel, and we don't, we don't play in every channel, you know, we're not, we're not advertising on television. You're not going to see a Super Bowl ad. <laughs> With Christian Community Credit Union, you're not going to see a, a stadium named after us, but we are we're, we are very active in the digital space. So digital marketing is, a, is has proven to be a very effective way to reach Christ followers across this country and make and make known who we are and who we serve and how we how we serve God and and, and building the kingdom. But we do a lot of we do a lot of other things internally. And and something I love about being in at Christian Community Credit Union, being in a, you know, we are the largest faith-based credit union, but we're small in comparison to, to even, you know, you mentioned Navy Federal, they're much larger. So it's a small team and we, we all jump in to help each other, whether we're in operations or in our ministry development team or finance, you, you really don't find people saying that's not part of the job, drawing st strong distinctions. So people jump in on business development. If we're, if we have an opportunity to serve a large ministry, We'll jump in as marketing. Others will jump in as well to help serve that ministry's needs and and serve the members of that ministry. Uh, so I, I, I that's something that is just I I love about our culture and in in a lot of comes to comes down to the the mission that we profess to and who we serve and 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 the the size the the size of the of the staff. People mm -hmm. are just very willing to help. 
What is, what is something there's a lot of listeners and myself included that do things in that digital space and, you know, you don't have to give me away any of your trade secrets or anything like that. However, in the, uh, in the spirit of good Christian sharing, what are, what are some things that are working well for y'all now to, to get to your target audiences? What are some uh, either techniques, tactics, you know, strategies, what are some things that you're seeing? This is working well, and we're excited about this as we, you know, head into this, we're recording in early ish 2024 as we head into 2024 what are some things you're liking so a lot of the work that we do to to drive organic traffic so a lot of the search engine optimization work we do is is one it's inexpensive and two it can be very effective a lot of the work we do a lot of testing with our user experience so we have a we have some tools in place that allow us to test one presentation versus another one to find which one is going to resonate most with with website visitors. And we have found some, we've found some tactics that work very effectively in, in, in attracting new prospects and helping them discover our products and get through the application process more easily. And that's, that's also relatively inexpensive to do. So we do have, we do have good success with paid search, although, you know, it's, we have to, it's, it is a daily battle because, you know, big tech is, not friendly to to faith based institutions, and so we we find that we have to continuously and daily we have to we have to refine our our strategies, our creative, because we'll have creative just get you know it maybe it mentioned faith or was too faith based and it gets doesn't get shown. So it's we have good success there, but it's it's very we have to be very vigilant in managing that. And then we implemented a marketing automation solution about a year and a half ago, and that's been very good at helping us to connect with folks who may have started an application but didn't complete it, help encourage them to come back and, and, and pick up where they left off. You know, we'll even connect prospects with a, with a human being to help them through the process. And so if, if, if it was something about the application that was too daunting, we've got, a, we've got somebody who is available on chat or even by phone who can help them with very good. So yeah, I heard, I, I, and I like that SEO is a is a strong source for you, and because those are obviously lower cost, but takes work over a long time. And then I, I was wondering if y'all are doing anything paid, and if y'all are seeing any positives or negatives. And I, I just, it is an interesting world out there. Is Christian Community Credit Union that is your website? Is that kind of a focal point that you would want to drive people to if they want more info for you? Absolutely. It's it's my cccu.com. And there you can see you can discover the products that we have to offer. We've got a full range of banking and lending products for consumers as well as a full range of banking and lending products for churches and ministries and business. And then we have an entire section of resources, which contains budgeting tools, stewardship tips. We have a whole blog series on, on raising your, helping your children learn good financial habits, learn good stewardship habits, learn, you know, giving back to, to the kingdom at an early age. So a whole full set of resources there you can find as well. Is this, and I'm actually scrolling down the site now, and I like, this is, this is probably a good marketing question that welcome CD five months, 5.25% APY got my attention. I'm sure that's y'all are aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Compared to the, you know, the 0.001, I asked the guy at Wells Fargo, I said, are you embarrassed even saying that rate that you're paying right now? (laughs) And he, he he didn't know what to say. He had no answer for that. Sorry. That was that was probably me not being Christ-like to him. Is, is, is <laughs> I, need, I need to work on that. And yeah, I'm scrolling down through here. So, so uh, business is it possible for a business to have an account outside of a ministry? It is. Yes, we have a full range of business pro- business products and services. And, and uh, you know, that's an area we're really looking to to have a greater impact on. So we're really looking to expand the the number of businesses we're able to serve. So it's a big area of focus for this this year. To, not, to continue serving ministry well, continue serving consumers well, but we want to be able to serve Christian business owners as well. Very good. All right. Well, Aaron, I appreciate it. I'm scrolling through here, actually looking at things very intriguing to me. So what else, 
what else would you like to say for someone to connect with you or get together with you? Where, where can they find you and just get more info? And this is, this could be either you personally or through the credit union, you gave the website. We'll make sure we include all those links and all the notes. Yeah. Be, beyond the website, myccu.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, Aaron Cade. You can email me, A-C-A-I-D at myccu.com. I'd be happy to hear from you and answer questions and help you discover what we have to offer at the credit union. So, and we've got a whole, whole team who can, who can jump in and assist as well. Good. Yeah. I've had, had fun with the conversation. My final question, Aaron, we are seek, go create those three words definitely have some spiritual meaning to them. Mm -hmm. But if I allowed you to choose one of those over the other two and why, which word would you choose? Seek, go, or create? I would choose create. And I, and there's one, that's what I love doing. I love building. I love making things. So it's, you know, I've had a great time doing that at the, at the, at the credit union, coming in just with my team, just building new things with the, with the larger credit union team. But it's taking, for me, it's, it's, it, it connotes taking the resources God has given you and use them to create something bigger in, in, in his glory, in his service. And so I, it just, I get excited thinking about, about creating new things that are to the glory of God. <laughs> Very cool. Aaron, I appreciate the conversation. And for those that are listening in, go go check out Christian Community Credit Union, myccu. Was it org or dot com? Dot com. Uh, my CC, dot com. My CCCU dot com. My CCCU dot com. Yeah, very good. And I'll tell you that one of the reasons that I even wanted to have this conversation, because I'm intrigued by the model and things like that, but it's just something that's always nagging at me is where's my money going? Who is it supporting? You know, what degree of control and transparency do I have with it? So I appreciate it. This has almost been a little bit of me just checking it out to see if it makes sense for, for me and my companies and businesses and ministries that we have too. So I appreciate it. Go check out all that Aaron has and connect with him over on LinkedIn if you want to do that. We are Seek Go Create. We're releasing new episodes every Monday here. Your support means the world to us. Now you can tip us, buy me a coffee, or offer financial support at seekgocreate.com forward slash support. Contributions start at just $1. And if you leave a comment, your comment could be featured in a future episode. Once again, visit seekgocreate.com forward slash support. Until next time, continue being all that you were created to be.